using composites has allowed a raft of innovations you wouldn't get on an aluminium body. It's permitted a square of fuselage cross-section, which means a larger baggage hold below and more overhead cabin space. I mean, look at the size of these bins. And the windows can be 50% larger than a normal plane. The 7E7 is pioneering other technologies too. There are no window blinds. They get dark electronically, like photoreactive sunglasses. Whoa! Boeing have also come up with this. It's a shower that fits inside an aeroplane. Now, watch it. It looks a bit like a washing machine, actually. And um, so I'm about to commence the spin rinse cycle. So I do that, I press that button. Ah! Oh, oh, ah! Oh! I'm being instructed to soak myself. It's giving me instructions on being rinsed. And apparently as well, it only takes a litre and a half of water. I'm really quite wet. Ah! I'm being turbocharged. Oh, stop. Exit, it says. There you are. The first shower on an aeroplane. Luckily for Boeing, whether the airlines buy the 7E7 won't depend on that shower. It's the savings in efficiency that will decide the company's future. So at this stage in the design process, how can they be sure the 7E7 they finally build will deliver that efficiency? Nobody builds prototypes anymore. It's a very expensive business. 90% of all the development is done on computers these days. And the computers spit out what they think the aeroplane is going to do or be capable of. But in order to prove it, they have to use one of these, a wind tunnel. Welcome to the latest member of my fan club. And this truly generates a mighty wind. Here at Kinetic in Farnborough, they test aeroplanes. But even though this place is vast, it's not big enough to put a full-size aeroplane in. So they use a scale model. I've been granted access to one of the most commercially sensitive places on the planet. The model bay in Europe's largest heavy lift wind tunnel. Boeing have invested $50 million into this facility, and they're extremely sensitive about who gets to see their design secrets. Wow. I've always wanted to meet a supermodel, and today I get my wish. This is the most exclusive supermodel in the world. It's a Boeing 77 here in the wind tunnel at Kinetic. Costs several million dollars to build, and the reason it's here is to have its aerodynamic characteristics of lift and drag photographed and examined. And those characteristics are going to be what makes this aeroplane so cheap to operate. To get the clearest picture of the airflow over the model, they attach small luminous tufts and film it using ultraviolet light. A bit like a 1980s disco. The Boeing engineers here are keeping everyone in the dark and they're very tight-lipped about their design secrets. But judging from the test setup, I'd say they're looking very carefully at the tail. On the other hand, if they told me that, they'd have to kill me. One thing I am able to divulge, though, is that Boeing's 77, with whatever shaped tail they finally settle on, is due to carry its first passengers in 2008. The Airbus Super Jumbo A380 will go into service in 2006, so it's far closer to finding out whether it will be a triumphant success or a monster white elephant. Skeptics say that this aeroplane is simply too large, that passengers don't want to fly with 549 of their fellow passengers on board, that you can't evacuate this kind of aeroplane quick enough in an emergency, that Airports simply don't want to handle anything this large. But Airbus have an answer to those problems. Airbus say, let the airlines decide, and the airlines have decided. They've voted with their checkbooks, and they've ordered more than 130 examples already. And at $285 million a pop, well, you do the maths. 
Well, the Airbus A380 is in production. The Boeing 77 following hot on its heels. But NASA, as ever, has its eye on the future. How do you fancy strapping on one of these? Next time you go on holiday.